maybe the first thing I ought to cover is how is our book, which should come out this year, different than the book that Kelly Allred published. So I made a little chart here. Um, Kelly's book, get back, has full descriptions. It's very detailed. Ours is, we're gonna try and make it more of a field book with brief descriptions. Uh, he's got maps. Ours are general distributions of plants. Uh, his is in two volumes. Ours will be in one volume. Uh, he didn't list elevations, ours does have elevations. Um, his have the beautiful line drawings by Ivy. Um, my, ours will have photographs, about 200 of them, of rare endangered endemic plants. Um, Kelly didn't put any artwork in his and uh, Rod, Hubble has included some artwork in our book. Uh, Kelly did a lot of the work themselves. I don't know how many contributors. I just put one to five. I know there's at least two or three. There may be more. We have over 50 people that have contributed to our book, many experts in the field. Uh, ours will be sent out for review by Missouri Botanical Garden. I don't know if his was or not, but I know some of the New Mexico botanists certainly reviewed it before it went to press. His was published by Lulu Press. Ours will be published by Missouri Botanical Garden. And by the way, I think it's kind of interesting. I, uh, DeWitt Ivy was my study hall teacher when I was at Sandia High School. <laughs> So here's a general map of New Mexico that um, Steve O'Kane came up with. And our eight areas will include the Navajo Nation, and I'll go over this some more, uh, Chama Land and Cattle Company. Um, here I did it again. Um, also Cruces Basin, and then up in here, uh, Rio Castillo Land Grant, the Pecos Wilderness is one I picked, Seven or so Wilderness, I'll talk some about that. Then we'll come down uh, White Sands Missile Range along the Santa Andrews Mountains. The Oscuras. And finally, we'll finish up in this area, which is um, the Gila. And then the last will be a little bit on the Diamond A Ranch in the Boot Hill. So, New Mexico is uh, 121,000, nearly 700 square miles. As you all probably know, the highest point is Wheeler at 13,161. The lowest, Red Bluff Reservoir, a little over 2,800 feet, and that's in Eddy County. Wheeler, of course, is in Taos. And with our major rivers, and we tried to collect along all of these, the Grande, Chama, Pecos, Gila, San Juan, and the Animas. Our funding was due to Mike Howard when he was with, B, he was a BLM botanist working out of Las Cruces. And we received a grant in 2007 to conduct field studies. And I should point out at that time, if we knew what we do now, we probably would not have come up with this book, we'd have just left it with Allred's. 
But we did the field work and we're pretty much obligated. Mike uh, wanted a final product. And that's why we've gone on to, uh, to come up with a field guide. Um, <clears throat> so we received money from them. We re received money from White Sands Missile Range, the US Army to cover publishing costs. And then we received some small grants from um, local Four Corners environmental companies like Nelson and Ecosphere Environmental Services or a couple of them. We came up with 133 plant families, 993 genera and over 36, or right at 3,600 species. And this includes introduced plants and native plants. Um, one thing that's be a little bit different with our book is that Rod Hubble has contributed some of his artwork. He was an artist that uh, worked out of Taos and then Santa Fe, but his hometown was Farmington. I've known him since uh, he graduated from high school. And, it was nice enough to put forth some of these really beautiful paintings. And besides that, we have photographs of over 200 rare and endemic plants. That's one of Rod Hubble's of the uh, Rio Grande box area near Taos. I think he sold that for over $8,000. Sunflowers over near uh, the Taos area, sagebrush. And uh, Utah juniper, it's in the Four Corners area. So I think you'll have somewhere around 20 paintings in our book. Okay, so we'll get started here. Vascular plants of New Mexico and eight areas then that I thought was interesting, botanical wise. So number one, Navajo Nation. So right here in my backyard. So that would include a good portion of San Juan County uh, boundaries between Farmington and Shiprock extends down into McKinley County. And then there's some checkerboard area in Sandoval County. And I believe maybe a little bit in Rio Reba, I'm not too sure on that. And when you mention Navajo Nation and collecting plants, you can't go without mentioning Arnold Clifford. Um, he was with us throughout on our Four Corners uh, flora book. And he's quite the botanist and knows his geology. One of the, actually one of the co-authors of the Four Corners flora. And he helped us some with uh, collections on the Navajo Nation in New Mexico. I don't know if you guys have had him as a speaker or not, but he's, uh, you might want to take the opportunity. Is there any way to get rid of that up there? <laughs> I don't think so. Anyway, this was, uh, we had, the Erie Algonum Society uh, meeting in Farmington, I don't know, maybe three years ago. And we closed it out with a long field trip on the Navajo Nation. And um, this is in the Chuska Mountains. Uh, we had quite a bit of rain that day. The rainbow was kind of a welcome sight to see.
There's a lot of um, rare plants on the Navajo Nation. Um, I was actually first introduced to this plant back when I was at Fort Lewis College. And um, so it's now listed as threatened, stretches north to near Cortez, south to Sheep Springs. Um, it's on BLM, BLM land, Bureau of Land Management, and also uh, Navajo Nation land. So that's a pretty narrow distribution. It does not do well in captivity and it's uh, with the drought, it's been suffering quite a bit. It's hard to find. So that's one of the federally protected plants on the Navajo Nation. Here's the other one, the Mancus milk vetch, which likes the slick rock country. It's also on BLM land and Navajo Nation land. In fact, I took my a systematic botany class this last semester to the Mancus Milk Vetch site. It was uh, found, I believe, in the 1880s. The type location was known as one day's ride from Mancus Trading Post. And of course that's horseback ride. And it wasn't seen for a hundred years. It's a neat plant. This year there was a few little blossoms and that was it. Another federally protected plant is the region rhizomatous. I kind of forget it, that it being, I know it's listed. I think it's listed as endangered. Arnold Clifford found a location, I believe in San Juan County. So over near what, Red, uh, Red Valley. Beautiful mountain. It's the highest point in San Juan County, a little over 8,000 feet. It has that really beautiful columnar joining all the way around. So we'd heard there was a route up to the top and we did quite a bit of exploring and trying to find it and eventually found an old horse trail that led to the top and just before we got to the top of the mountain we found this plant the abajo fleabane the region abajoensis the type locality is the abajo mountains uh, near monticello utah and then from there Arnold found it near Tees Naspas in Arizona. And then we found the population in growing on the, uh, on beautiful mountain. And finally we did find it in one location in Colorado. So it's in all four corner states. It's really a pretty little thing. I like that plant a lot. Uh, the Navajo uh, mountain phlox or phlox cludiana. And type locality is Navajo Mountain in Utah. And 
eventually it was discovered in the Chuska Mountains. A pretty little thing, and it's uh, state listed, state of New Mexico listed. Another one that's state listed is uh, Acra Cliffordii, or Clifford's ground cell, named for Arnold Clifford. You can see it doesn't have ray flowers, just the disc flowers. Remember, Asteraceae for a while was lumped into Acra Spellenbergii, which is found on the eastern side of the state. But to me, they look good. Quite a bit different. So that grows on uh, Chen Li formation, another one of Arnold's finds. Visaria Navajoensis, the Navajo bladder pod. Another New Mexico listed plant found near Thoreau. It barely entered into the San Juan Basin over near Crystal, New Mexico. And a couple others uh, that are in the Chuscas that I thought were really neat is, is Fenler's Hedgehog. And this little guy, Calicordus aureus, just barely enter San Juan County, right near Crystal. Okay, that's number one. We'll move on to number two, Chama Land and Cattle Company. And also I'm including with this because it's adjacent to the uh, Chama Land and Cattle as Cruces Basin Wilderness. A few slides of it. So that would be found on east of the Continental Divide somewhere in here. With Cruces Basin adjacent to it. So Rio Riva County. And as far as I know, we were the very first to get on there, on their land. It's uh, got a beautiful lodge. So if you can afford $250, $300 a night, you can stay there. Uh, it's known for hunting and fishing, hunting for trophy elk. The land's owned by the Hickory tribe. Um, the state was going to buy it, but it was uh, vetoed by the governor. Not our present governor, but one back in the 80s, I guess. This is near the lodge, so it's a lower elevation with scattered pinion, juniper, uh, antelope bitter brush, uh, quite a few little ponds, and some scattered ponderosa pine and then climbs on up to, I don't know, maybe 10,000, 11,000 feet. Uh, or upper Brazos, a little stream. <clears throat> really pretty area, quite a few lakes. Here's Steve O'Kane, who worked with me on both Four Corners and 
Pastor Prince of New Mexico. One of the pretty plants that are in within the San Juans where they come down into New Mexico is this uh, Corydalus caseana or cases Corydalus. It's pretty common in Colorado and just a few locations in New Mexico. And you have the orchids, a fairy slipper, pretty common in there. And one of the plants I'm always like to see is the alpine miter wart. It's kind of rare in New Mexico. It's scattered throughout parts of Colorado. And so we have two different ones. The alpine is one. So here's the petals and so stamens are located alternate or opposite, I mean, petals are alternate on the um, other miter wart with white flowers. So both of those were found at Chama land and cattle. And then adjacent is the Crucis Basin area, and I have not spent a lot of time in there, but the train, Cumbers Toltec Railroad goes through the northern portion of that. They have some scattered Engelman spruce and some fir, montane grasslands, really pretty area. And that's in the wilderness area. Buttercups, this particular one is real common in Colorado, barely gets into New Mexico. And Jim McGrath was the first to find this plant. Manianthes trifoliata in, uh, in New Mexico. It's, only, it's only known from one little shallow pond in Crucis Basin. I've also collected it. Then as you're hiking out, you find these guys, moon warts, if you're there at the right time of the year. August, September, little tiny guys are really hard to spot. Rio Castillo land grant. So that, let's see, get our map. And that's something covering mine, maybe north of Wheeler Peak, right along the Colorado line. I don't know why that's hanging down there now. It's got little terror lakes. I think there's seven or eight. I can't remember. This is the upper one. So it'd be subalpine to alpine. There's quite a bit of wildlife. We saw a bear. All these little guys, little dots you see are elk covering that hill. And there's Don Hyder at summit of Big Castilla Peak. So 
So we're looking north. This was really interesting area. We kept going back. We really enjoyed ourselves. Eriophorum, cotton grass, shoes are eye, all these little white specks. And that's a close up. And that's the only place that's known in New Mexico. I think a guy by the name of Ben Legler collected it before I did. Maybe somebody else, I'm not sure. So you, here you're at about 13,000 feet. You're looking north in the Alpine. Extends along, all this is in Rio Constantia land grant. Then you got this huge canyon through here. But then, if you're able to, you climb up to right in here. And then this is in Colorado, this part's in New Mexico. State line peak, I believe they call it. So Hayden's Indian paintbrush. Costalia Hayden Nine. That's in the San Juans and the Sangre de Cristo range in the Alpine. I don't know the, the individual that first found this. It was found on Wheeler Peak. So my goal was to find it further north. And we did find it on Rio Castilla. Reba and Ricky, I, Fraser Hill, Whitlow Grass, a member of the Mustard family. So that's on the state list. Then you get into a different soil type. And that's a habitat for Penstemon blakelii, Blakely's Penstemon, named for late David Blakely. Um, I found this and couldn't key it very well. It looks very similar to one that's in the San Juans, but there are differences. So I sent it to David and then eventually um, O'Kane and I got it published and we named it for David. But it's only in the Alpine in that kind of ready soil. And this strange looking flox, Vermejo lensis. It was named by Ben Legler. And even there, it's really hard to find, it's rare. Okay, on to the next area, Pecos Wilderness. My first introduction to the Pecos Wilderness was back when I was like a senior in high school and me and a guy by the name of Gary Sweenhart hiked in to it and with heavy packs and been a few days and hiked back out. So I've always 
at a soft spot for this area. So here you got the GM and then you got the Hayden Eye, the Castalia, the Get Me Nots. So I think most of you probably know it's in this area. There's the Pecos River, the headwaters. We did a lot of collecting right in here where we have about three counties that come together. If you haven't read the book, Beatty's Cabin, by Elliot Barker, you should. It's a wonderful book. This is what Beatty's Cabin looked like in 1922 in the wilderness area of the, of the Pecos. And I think they built the second cabin. Now I think they're on the third. This one doesn't exist anymore. It's near Pecos Falls. We came in by the way of, uh, we took horses, we came in by the way of Hamilton Mesa. So Montane grassland. And if you look hard enough, you can find this guy. The Pecos Sago Lily, Halicortis Gunnisoni, a different variety or poker, instead of variety of Gunnisoni. It's a kind of a yellowish cream, I guess. And there's Pecos Falls. With a nice little bridge across it. And this plant right here is the Arizona willow. Salix, Arizonica. And I'm not sure if it's federally listed. I know it's at least state listed. Then in that region, not necessarily up high, but lower elevations of the Pecos, you've got this delphinium that's kind of more yellow in color, Sapolonis. It was state listed and they took it off the, the state list because they felt it was too common. I've hiked up to Catherine Lake a couple of times. Never did any good fishing, but it's sure beautiful. But it's a long hike in and out in one day. I think it's eight miles in one way. Santa Barbara Divide area where we did a lot of collecting. Uh, you have your Colorado Columbine. Then I collected this Hiles Whitlow grass, it was named for me, um, and I sent it off to Missouri Botanical Garden. And um, it was thought to be new, or it was a new species, and we named it my honor. And also of net alpine, you'll find this delphinium, a little different than the other one, close to the ground. Pretty cool. Okay, Sabinosa Wilderness Area. I'll be heading back to this, lo or this location on Friday. We're doing a botanical study. It's the, um, the newest wilderness area, as far as I know, for the U.S., but maybe certainly for New Mexico. 
you can see me standing on this little ledge, looking down in Canyon Largo. One thing that's quite unique is that the entire wilderness area is surrounded by private land. So you can see a road down here. But of course, being a wilderness area now, that's, you can't take it. We were able to drive to about here and there's a wilderness gate about in this location. And then the wilderness area follows it for about uh, the Largo for about 15 miles where the Largo empties into the Canadian River. So where is Sabino so? Well, here's the Canadian. So it'd be somewhere about right in here, I would guess. It's in San Miguel. And they get sudden, sudden uh, thunderstorms. Um, a lot of the plants uh, were not rare. We didn't find anything botanical. That was all that unusual. Uh, probably the most interesting things we found was some of the stuff you'd expect much further south was making its way into this area. So you've got a lot of um, pinion, um, pinocedulus, Ponderosa pine, oak, uh, Rocky Mountain juniper and single seed juniper. That's an individual by the name of Fred Romero. We were trying to get into the wilderness area, taking this old, old road. I don't think anybody knows the area better than Fred Romero does. In fact, we'll be meeting up with him on Saturday to take us back in, do some collecting. Might be my last collecting trip in there, then I'll get have a nice old final report to write up. <laughs> and you probably recognize this individual, Chick Keller, sitting on a rock in Sabinoso. He was interested in knowing what, I'll go back this plant was, since it wasn't in bloom, well, there it is. Stick leaf, Menzelia, decap, de, deca, petalus. I'll get it out yet. Ten petal blazing stone. Beautiful plant. Plectocephalus americanus, basket flower you'll find in there. This is one that's much further south. I was surprised to find this. Nosma Texana, Rue of Mountains, Ruby AC. A lot of uh, Penstemon Jamesy. That's probably the most common Penstemon in the area. Chocolate flower. Say all these plants are real common, but still kind of neat to find. That one's not so common, climbing milkweed. That's new for the county. In this case, San Miguel County, which Las Vegas is in. A lot of that, green flowered hedgehog. He kind of serves for Rita Flores. 
And this one actually used to be on the rare plant list. They took it off, it extends on up into Colorado, Herectia corda, spiny aster. Number six, White Sands Missile Range. What a huge area. So, I was gonna do that. Coach, all the San Andres Mountains. Salinas Peak is the highest, right at close to 9,000. And then you have Mockingbird Gap right through here. And then the Oscuras are also within the missile range. So Socorro County, a little bit of Lincoln, tiny bit of Otero, Doniana, and Sierra. So it's a big area. There's a book, I can't remember the author's name, but it's called uh, Pocket Full of Missiles. So if you're really interested in white sands, that really gives a great history of the area. And Pat Garrett and Billy the Kid, uh, and they're present. There's your San Andres Mountains. With the gypsum. Dave Anderson used to give field trips at White Sands Missile Range. Um, here he is at the, the old V2 missile site. And he and I got to be good friends while we were doing botanical work there. He's now retired, but I think the world of a good person. That's the old Pat Garrett site where his ranch was. That's from the top of Salinas Peak, looking towards the White Sands area. And that's from the top of Oscura Mountains. Kind of uh, east, southeast, I think. We decided to get out of there before that hit us. Uh, a lot of wildlife there. Black bear, oryx. Some of the plants uh, at the lower elevation, I think mostly in Doniana counties, he kind of says Strominius. Strawberry cactus. And Dave Anderson took that photo. Ocotillo. Claret cup cactus. Big old hedgehogs. Gigantic. Seems like where there's gypsum, they get a lot bigger. Night blooming cereus. We um, found one with a bud and we thought that it might bloom at night. So we're staying in facilities at main post and then so 35 mile drive one way to 
where this cactus is at, and it didn't bloom that, <laughs> that night. But the following night it did, so it's worth the effort. So the flowers last a day. Moth pollinated. Prettily, San Andreas rock daisy. Am I supposed to do that? It's a cliff dweller, it's on the state list. As is a Selene planchii, which is in the pink family. Carry off a lacy. The only place I found that on the missile range was at uh, on top of the San Andres Mountains. Polygala remicula, variety mescalary autumn. And this is known from Black Mountain. One location on Black Mountain on the Missile Range. Heck of a climb to get to it. It, um, well, the staff at the Missile Range hired an individual to look for more populations and never found any more. It's got to be one of the rarest plants in the U.S. Okay, number seven, the Gila Wilderness area. So my time collecting there ran a little short because of all the fires that they had in the area. I couldn't get back in. So that would extend over here, the Mogollon Mountains, and we did some collecting in Catron County. Whitewater Baldy is where one rare plant is. So that'd be about it. It's most well known, the Gila for the cliff dwellings, right? There's Whitewater Baldy after the fire. I don't know if any of you have ever taken the catwalk in that area. That's well worth it. Gila thistle, Circeum gilens. And I've only seen it in one area, so it's pretty rare. State list. And there's the one that's found on Whitewater Baldy region, Hesiae. This is a neat plant. Uh, I think Bob Savinsky is one of those that found it. Uh, used to be in Zygodinus, now in Anaclea, type of death camus, Mogollonensis. Agastache cana, giant hyssop, member of the mint family is in that area. All these are kind of hit and miss and finding the locations. Pyracium brevipillum, Megion hawkweed. That's on the state list. Where we found the most of it is it was disturbed areas around these um, forest service cabins. Scrofulary macrantha, that's in Grant County at lower elevation. The 
was, I wouldn't say common, but it was, it was quite a bit of it when I first uh, started dealing with rare plants, but it seems to be on the downward trend. And Selene Rydia writes can't be another member of the pink family, Carrie Offalacy. Likes these slow moving, shallow streams. And finally, we're at number eight Diamond Day Ranch in the Boot Hill. And that's Animus Mountain. And probably the best place to see a desert grassland. So Boot Hill, Animus Mountains, go right in here. I went up a little canyon collecting called uh, Negro Bill Canyon. And this was in September. I don't know how, how it got its name. Uh, I was working my way down that little dirt road. It was September. I checked the thermometer in my truck was 106 degrees. I couldn't believe it. So hot. And the headquarters is here. See a little shiny spot. And Pelincios. That's agave. Pomeroy, what's left of it, probably another one here. Indian Creek, that's in the uh, Animus Mountains. That has really some neat plants in it. But you've got to get permission to get in there. A lot of rattlesnakes. That guy, I took that photo. It, it um, I saw one on right in one location on one day and then went back like a year later and there he was again. <laughs> Must have lived near there. Chihuahua scarf pea, Pettymelon pentafilum. That's on the New Mexico list. And that's not on Diamond Day, it's north of there. But kind of still in the Boot Hill area. Coral root, Hexelectris culmini. The guy that its name for died recently. He wrote a book on New Mexico, Arizona orchids, Ron Coleman. And he did, before he passed on, he did the coral or the orchid family for our book. This is on Diamond Day at a place called Kirkpatrick's. Um, last couple of times I've there, I couldn't find any of them. And this is recently found, I found it uh, a few years back, plant that was only known for Mexico. And been found now on the boot hill, Kirkpatrick's and near there. There's one that was found in the boot hill. As far as we know, it's now extinct. I had to go to Arizona to get the photo. <laughs> A 
Escobaria orcadii, Orcot's pincushion. Um, that's in the Big Hatchet Mountains. And I guess the Florida is adjacent Florida Mountain. And another one on the state list. And we'll finish with a sunset and that does it.